after understanding the first order differential equation and its economic applications we can now understand the second order and the higher order differential equations and definitely afterwards we can understand their economic applications as well so let's start with the basic understanding of these uh, kind of differential equations as the name guides us it's about the higher order and the second order derivatives and when we take the second order derivative of any uh, variable or any function it basically tells us the rate of change of the rate of change or the rate of change of the slope of a function so this is the basic understanding of the second order derivative which will be applicable here and even in economic analysis the meaning remains the same for example we might be interested not in just in the rate of change of income but how this rate of change of income changes over time that is the rate of change of the rate of change of income it means that if the income is changing yes we can measure its rate of change but is this rate of change uh, getting faster or remaining the same or becoming slower over time so this is an, another meticulous uh, level of observation on how the changes in income uh, are taking place we can also do this for profits because uh, an entrepreneur is very much keen about the profits and definitely he would like to uh, shed light on how the profit is changing and how this rate of change is changing is it getting faster or slower so this is uh, the um, benefit of using the second order derivative in case of the um, economic variables and when we incorporate them in the equation they give rise to second order differential equation or higher order differential equation depending upon the order of the derivative included in the equation how we can uh, include these higher order derivatives or second order derivatives in the equation like this for example it's the second order derivative of y with respect to t and it is equal to ky if it is equal to ky this is one of the possibilities um, that we have started with so right hand side remains the same here however we have the dependent variable and its first derivative and then its second derivative so in this way the second order derivative is uh, calculated here and it tells us about the rate of change of the rate of change in the dependent variable so we can generalize it to any order that is nth order instead of just second order and in the Lebanez notation we can write a higher order differential equation like this that is the first uh, term is the derivative term of the highest order in the given equation in this case it is the nth order and the uh, second term is appearing after a plus sign and it is the this uh, derivative is uh, one less than the highest order that is n minus one th, uh, order derivative for example if this is three third order derivative this would be second order derivative that is minus one and with it there is a coefficient and this is the first coefficient which we are using and it is a constant coefficient instead of writing a we are writing a1 because this is the first coefficient this is the second coefficient so it's a2 this is the final coefficient that is a n and this is the second last coefficient which is a n minus 1 so this is n minus 1 th coefficient so you see the coefficient they are uh, increasing in terms of their subscript these are the coefficients their subscripts and when it comes to the derivative the derivative their order is declining as we go from left towards right so, as we can see there was nth order derivative then there was n minus one order derivative then n minus two or other derivative and then uh, first order derivative and this is zero level that is no derivative so the derivative order is declining from left to right 
However, the coefficient subscript is increasing from left to right. This is the constant, just like we usually have in the first order differential equation. In the Lagrange notation, this uh, uh, will be the form that is the nth order derivative with respect to t. This is the n minus 1 de order derivative with respect to t. This is n minus 2 order derivative with respect to t. And coefficients, they are appearing a1, a2, a n minus 1, and then a n. So in this way, it is happening. So the order is nth due to nth uh, derivative because we observe the highest order derivative present in a differential equation. Here it is the nth order derivative. We are assuming that it is linear and it is of first degree. That is the term which is the nth order derivative has a power of 1. For example, if I uh, remember the term of the highest order derivative, The power is not written, it means that it is 1. So it is with degree 1 and it is linear because the power is 1. Then the constant coefficients, they are there. There are a's, that is a1, a2, a3 and so on. And there is constant term, that is b. And there are some delimitations. We have put some limits on this uh, standard form. And that is that for simplicity, variable coefficients and variable terms are not considered. We have taken the case of constant coefficients and constant terms. That is here, the constant coefficients and constant terms. It has simplified the uh, situation that we are dealing with. Otherwise, with variable coefficients and variable terms, the things would have been quite difficult. The, this course deals with linear cases only. We don't have the nonlinear higher order differential equations. We only have linear higher order differential equations as we just saw here. And then the cross terms are also excluded. That is the product of the function and the derivative. Such terms are not included. You will see that only the uh, function or its derivatives are appearing and not any product of them. Because when the product appears, th the uh, cross terms, they come into being and give rise to another sort of situation, which is not uh, the linear situation. So this is another simplification for the sake of uh, easier understanding of the higher order differential equations. So in this case, we are assuming the n is equal to 2, that is second order differential equations. And its uh, standard form will be reduced to this, that is the highest order derivative, then first coefficient, then second coefficient, and the second highest derivative, and then the function itself. And we can also write it in this Langrisian form if you want to. The second order derivative, the first order, and the original function. The first coefficient, the second coefficient. Now we should also uh, compare the uh, particular integrals of this sort of uh, uh, second order differential equation. Primarily, you know that the uh, basic concern is if we are dealing with a homogeneous case or a non-homogeneous case. When v is equal to 0, there will be homogeneous case. And if it is not so, then we have non-homogeneous case. So this is the identification of uh, whether we have homogeneous case or not. This is the terminology, homogeneous versus non-homogeneous. And these are the components of the solution, that is yp. And here yp is equal to 0 and yp is not equal to 0. Here we haven't uh, considered the value of yc, which is the other component of the solution. But right now we are considering the particular integral. Now under the homogeneous case and non-homogeneous case, the uh, subcases exist because of the two coefficients, that is a1 and a2. Both of them are there. So their possibilities uh, will give rise to multiple cases. The identification is here and then the formula for the particular solution. Now the possibilities are there that if um, a2 is non-zero and then if a2 is zero and then finally again a2 is zero. Here the value of a1 is zero, here the value of a1 is not equal to zero. So these are similar cases because in both of the cases, 
a2 is equal to 0 and then there is a2 which is not equal to 0 it means that a1 is not equal to 0 or a1 is equal to 0 so there is no restriction on a1 the restriction is on a2 only that it should be non zero so this is the non zero uh, restriction this is zero restriction on both of these so uh, if a2 is non zero we can use this formula because a putting a2 in the denominator will not be a problem we must remember that this zero is actually b because in the non homogeneous case you know that b is non zero so we can consider this before we understand this the same restrictions are here a2 is 0 or a2 is not equal to 0 so uh, a1 is not equal to 0 and a1 is equal to 0 is the couple of possibilities here again a1 is not restricted it can be 0 it can be non zero so the formula is uh, b over a2 and it means that a2 can be there in the denominator it will not make it in the indefinite value or infinity because a is non zero when a is zero a2 is uh, non uh, a2 is zero then we cannot use this formula because putting a2 is equal to zero here will make it infinity so the formula changes that is b into t over a1 because a1 is not zero but when both that is a2 and a1 are 0 then we use this formula which is b into t square into uh, divide by 2 so uh, neither we can use a1 nor we can use a2 here in the denominator because both of them are 0 and they will make this term undefined if you put them in the denominator so the same set of formulas is used here the same formulas they are used here and instead of b we have 0 because it is a homogeneous case so in all of these cases the answer of the particular integral will be equal to 0 and this is what happens in the homogeneous case the value is only of yc whereas yp disappears so this is the summary of the particular integral of the um, sub cases and then cases of the second order differential equation in the next video we will develop these formulas that is these formulas how we can derive them thank you